Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear us. This is Jane Hamill, and I'm here with Boaz David. Hi, Boaz. Hi. How are you good? Hey, hey guys. We are from the Indie Design Association, as you know. And today is a special day because it's snowing in Chicago for one. But number two, we are here to answer all your questions. We are the Dictionary of Fashion Business Information. Okay, sort of like that. Wikipedia, really, because we're free, right? <clears throat> so <laughs> welcome and thank you for coming. Let me just ask you to do me a favor because it's always weird when I start talking on these things and I don't know if anybody's um, – Listening, if you could just raise your hand if you can hear us. And then, Boaz, tell me if anybody raises their hand. Um, it's a new program, so we're still trying. So they to... might be, but we don't know. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, right. What we'll do. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just. Some. I see some. I see some. I think it's kind of, they need to figure out how to do the. Yeah, the... I know. Sorry, guys. It's a brand new program for us, so we're working on it, and we're getting it all together. Um, so. Let's just, here's what I think we should do. Let's just go with um, the very first question. And um, what we'll do, Boaz, when they have a question, they press pound. If they're, uh, on the, if they're listening on the phone, they press what? Yes. Do you remember? Um, if they, ooh, that's. Oh, I know. Okay, they're, they're pound seven. Pound seven. That's yes. It. So yes. anybody who has a question, if you press, if you're listening on the phone, press pound seven. If you're listening through the computer, then there should be a little section there to um, raise your hand, okay? So this is what I'm trying. All right, so let me ask you. Um, yes. Let me ask the person. Let's just see if we have a question. Anybody who has a question from, if you are from North Carolina, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, do you have a question for us? Let's unmute and see if there's anything you want to chat about because you were one of the first on the line. Okay, should we unmute the person? I think I did, which is your job. Sorry. Hi, do we have a caller on the line? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We, we can. can. Hi. Yay. Hi, sorry, there's a little delay, so we'll just try to chat. Boaz, are you on the I'm line too? You're good? I am, and I hear all of you. Okay, hey, great, welcome. How are you? What's your name? My name is Felicia Crouch. It is funny because it is a delay. Yeah, sorry. You know what? Turn off your. If you're listening on your computer, turn off your computer, or turn the volume down. I think. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, now how? That's better. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's that's just like a radio better. show. I didn't know I had my own radio show, Boaz. You and I radio. We were staying in Boaz. Uh, oh, okay, but now I can't see anybody where it says raise your hand. Are were y'all serious? Like, can you I, are you supposed to see us? Too? Oh no, sorry. It's an expression of like a little oh. a little fake hand on your screen that raises. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's like this little it's funny. Clip I have hand. been on some where you can't see each other. Yeah, I know. No, you can't see anything. You could just picture okay. us. We're just oh, you know. okay. Okay, got you. I am so happy you guys are having this conference call today. Oh, because good. Because I, yes, I am, and it's free. Yay! I know free stuff is good, right? Yes, it's so good. But here's my question. Go ahead. I have actually, I've got two questions. I don't know if you want to ask one now and then the other one later. No, but, let's just go for it. Don't worry, I'll turn off that feedback okay. that you're hearing. Okay. Okay. All right. My question number one is. Is it, I have a line of children's apparel that's sold by sales reps at the major markets around the country to children's boutiques. Um, my question is, is it okay to sit out a season as opposed to, like, we just finished spring, summer? And I don't think I have enough pieces for fall for the trade show that starts, they're getting ready to start in February. Is it okay if I sit out the fall season and then start back in spring, or do you think I'll lose a ton of customers? Now, and then here's the other part of the question. If I only, like I read your information and it says I don't have to have a full line, but if I have like 10, 10 or 11 pieces like I have, 
my sales reps won't really show them to customers because they say it's too small of a line. People aren't really interested in that because it's not a whole big collection presentation. Hmm. Boaz, okay, so so you're dealing with bigger stores than normally, or how much volume have you been doing if you want to share, like, whatever's comfortable for you? Like? Well, actually, it's just my first season. So I only have, like, ten stores that picked me up in the spring. Okay. And, and are they boutiques? And there are ten boutiques, children's boutiques. And their volume, their, well, their average, since I'm still kind of new at it, their average order is about – Eight to nine hundred dollars. Okay. And did you get these stores through your rep, or is it stores that you worked? Uh, I actually got. Well, the the stores were actually they give us all the boutiques, which is about four thousand boutiques that come to all these trade shows. They actually didn't sell anything at the shows. I actually used the sales sheets that they gave me to call the customers after the customers left the shows because at the shows they were told that they didn't even know my line was there. Right. And, you know, they said they went to the showroom, but the reps didn't tell them about it. And Long story short, I sold it in after the shows were over. Okay. Mm, interesting. Okay. Um. And, was that and now I'm in a catch-22. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should give them the 10 pieces or wait until I let, have a fuller collection of this fall stuff and then start in the middle. Or let me ask you something. Let me ask you something to begin with, so we'll know where we are. What can okay. you? What can you do? Like for example, if we're, what, if we're what, going what, to what? Say that again, Bellas. I'm sorry. What is it that you can do? Meaning, if you're if you need to do something, if you need to put together a line, what can you do? Can you put together a small line, or is that absolutely not a possibility? Can you like I'm trying to see what are the things that you can work with, and then we can. Well, what what, what I can do is like I have a small line for fall. I have okay. like ten pieces. Okay. But what I find is when I present them with a smaller amount of garments. Because they're paid on commission, they won't really show that small line, but they'll show maybe the line across from me that has about 30 to 50 pieces. Right. Um, so I don't know if I should pull my pin and try and come up with some more pieces and start showing fall in the middle of the season at the trade shows that start in. March, or should I just forget all altogether? Um, I. What did here's, you here's something that you can do, and you tell me, you know, okay. how is okay. it working with with how you feel about it? Um, okay. Generally, from from the trade show that you did, mm-hmm. did you feel that it was a good show for you to do, like? Was it I worth felt, I felt well actually it was better for me when I went to each customer's boutique because I got to share my story, the story behind the line and all of that. I found that at the trade shows the trade shows were so big and so overwhelming in Atlanta and Dallas it was more let me look at yours, let me look at somebody else, let me look at Absolutely. somebody else. Absolutely. This is this is exactly why yeah. I'm asking you this cuz my personal feeling is uh-huh. that what you can do in it, from what you describe, it seems like the best way for you to go is to actually not do it, not to do a trade show next season, but try to get, put together a line and approach, okay. begin with these 10 stores that did buy from you from last season. Because one thing you don't want or you try and, or you, you want to try and do is build business with customers who bought from you for first, you know, and occur. Right, Boaz, right, exactly. Okay. Honestly, because otherwise there is a chance that by, you know, if you skip a season altogether, who knows what's going to happen when you go back to them a season after. So if you have something there, even if you can put something together based on the styles that you do have and just offer new colors or do something smaller, but that's something, only at least something that you can present to them again um, and go to them directly. Okay, My, you would do that as 
Okay, okay. Because, because with, the stores you, that I presented, to, they didn't need, they didn't mind that the collections were small. It was exactly. my rent. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you back it up a second, who's giving you the trouble right now? It's the sales right. reps. Number one, it is. Yeah. They didn't even sell a damn thing. And I'm not exactly. saying they're bad sales reps. I'm just saying they're geared. They're, they want a bigger company to sell more at one time, so they get right. more bang for their time yeah. and their buck. And you know, I can see their. I feel their pain, but. Yeah. The the problem is it doesn't really serve an independent designer because you don't you do not want a fifty piece collection. They do, and the stores mm-hmm. don't care either. So and they didn't. In, they didn't care at all. Yeah. Oh, no. And the truth is, what's going to happen is that you're going to do a fifty style collection, but produce only twenty. If, right. Exactly. And, but and, now here. But what about this, guys? Do you find that, like, our line has been featured in the Earnshaw Children's Magazine several times, but now am I going to lose, do you, will I lose out in the end when people say, oh, what showrooms are you in? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think, see, you said, you answered something that I thought was the best answer for your question, is that you said that you had better success when you went directly to the store and were able to build a relationship with them and tell them personally the story behind the line and explain to them what you're trying to do. There were probably, okay. probably you, you got the best feedback from them uh, because you were able to present it the way you have it in your mind as your vision. Okay. I'll tell you this, it doesn't really matter how big you're going to be and I wish you, and I hope, you know, wish you it'll be as big as you want it to be. Right. No matter when and no matter how, that will be always the best way for you to communicate with, with your customers is when you're presenting it. And no matter how okay. many showrooms they're going to okay. do in the future, mm-hmm. but especially at this point where, you know, showrooms or even sales reps, you know, not, not anyone else, um, they will not be able to present your line the way you can. And quite honestly, I think there's tons of uh, advantages to the fact that you can do it now with stores because it's more than they just going to buy your uh, products from you at this point. Your yeah. goal should be also to build some kind of a relationship with them. And by that, okay. to get feedback from them, to be okay. able to go back to them every season and build something directly for them. This, okay. you know, if you have, a, if you build your business like that, you're not going to be dependent on sales rep. And that's okay, what perfect. Oh, gosh, that just made a world of difference. I like that. If I build it that way, I'm not depending on the sales reps taking my stuff to all the different trade shows. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, was, I mean, it, eventually okay. you can add them back in. You know, you don't sure. have to say okay. no sales reps forever, but right now it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Okay. And I can tell you from, from it's actually, the, I think it's the best business model for an indie designer is to start doing the sales themselves um, and go directly to the stores, even though I know it's maybe harder because it's more time and it's, you know, the yeah. whole issue of getting to buyers. But if you're telling right. us that you already had 10 stores that you were able to get in touch with and they bought your line. Yeah, that's kind of a lot on your own there. Oh, absolutely. By the way. That, that's, that's, is that's, it really? Yeah. Oh. Felicia, okay. you should and, and you I, should be proud. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. And I guess I, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, God, this is kind of bad because I'm looking at a list of Atlanta that has about 600, and Dallas that has so many, and I'm looking at all this business. But yeah, thank you. I feel good now about it. Oh, I, I think honestly, I, I think that's one of the things that the designers go into this business. And seeing all the stores that are out there and thinking, you know, if I got 10 or 50 in my first season, that means I did really bad. But quite yeah. honestly, if you did this on your own and mm-hmm. these these businesses responded to you and they're buying your stuff. And more than that, if these stores are going to go back to you and look at your line again the next season, you did more than enough. Yeah, you are that's, actually on the good that's path. That's the question, yeah. So, okay. so, let's, so here's, let's challenge you just a little bit more to keep moving forward. Okay, good job. Yeah, now can. let's go I, forward, right? So okay. you have um, you sold these ten stores. How many of them? How did it sell? Do you know? I don't know yet. Actually, we are just closing out spring this week. So now the other new part is 
I'm getting ready to start shipping to them. And okay. they're excited. I'm excited. And here's my other question real quick, and then I'll let you guys move on. Sure, when yeah. I ship to them, do I pay for the shipping from my manufacturer to their store, or is that something I'm supposed to get their credit card and let them pay for their own shipping? You add, you add the shipping to their to their invoice. They pay for the freight. No, well, okay. what he means is you you Meaning, ship it and then you, you bill them for it on their invoice. Yes. Okay, wait. Say that one more yeah. time. So, I think. I think, I think, Boaz, what you mean, you, what, I know what you're saying, but I think what you, the way to say it is, you get their credit card, you uh-huh. charge through the amount of the product plus the shipping. Okay, so the product plus the shipping. So it's a total invoice amount. But now, how will I do that if, oh, okay, I see. So then, Am I waiting until the manufacturer then ships it? Like, because you know they're going to tell me, well, we got to weigh it in. We don't know yet. All of that. Right. Right. Um, so just wait until. What's the best way to handle that? Do you say, Boaz? Um, honestly, it's either um, it's either first of all, the, a lot of times I don't know who the warehouse that you work with, but a lot of times they can give you the price oh, before okay. actually shipping. Uh, okay. They'll, they'll pack it and tell you, okay, this is how it's, this is the weight and that's the cost, and then you okay. get it. Or, or what happens? What I do is a lot of times, if you want to just charge, it depends how how these customers are paying. Are they paying you with credit cards? Because you, worst comes to worst, you can just, uh, you know, charge them for the amount uh-huh. of the invoice and then charge them again for the freight. I would, oh, okay. I would, I would suggest not doing that because as a retailer, That's for true. 14 years I hated that. Um, and what? Here's what I did because I was very sensitive to being the person on the other end. Which not that you're not Boaz, but you know. But um, what I would do is you can just go on UPS. You'll get to feel real fast after you shift a couple right. boxes. How much something is going to weigh and what the size of your box is. It gives you an estimate right there. And you just that, use that estimate. And so if it's sure. fourteen seventy one and it actually costs you fifteen eighty five, okay. Well whatever. Okay, okay. You know? not, yeah. So here's my suggestion and that's what I did. Um always. And that's that I learned in one of the first businesses I worked with on that. We always add two or three dollars to the shipping. Okay. Meaning if the estimation was eleven thirty four, the shipping will be thirteen thirty four. In the scheme of things, it will balance. On some you lose, you some you win, but you'll cover yourself with that. Okay, got you. Right. Yeah, uh, don't add that, more than that. Like, boys, that's a great point. That's perfect. Um, yeah. I, there have been companies who've been like, they add extra speak for their handling, and that that those are the kind of things that you know that really okay. bother retailers. Right. Okay. Okay, got um, you. But yeah. Oh, just, this is wonderful. Okay. But but again, if if. If it's it's easier, I guess if if they're paying you after you're shipping, I don't know. That that's for a case of credit cards. If you know, if you have, do you have any terms with any of the stores, or what is what are your terms? No, I don't. The terms right okay. now are um, if 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 they get it, and the only the only way that they can return it is that okay. it was damaged in freight or something like that. But we don't okay. have any net thirty or anything like that. Good girl. Perfect. 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 Yeah. Perfect. So it sounds like you're in a good place. Okay. Now, now, what do you all think about COD? I think it ended in about 2001, 2004. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. But my sales rep said to me, because a couple of the customers said, you don't do COD? Every, like, everybody's doing that. And the sales rep said, well, that's a good idea because you get your money right up front. But, I just didn't feel like it was because I thought COD was way over. Do you all know anything about whether that's well, still taking place? In I can tell you that as as doing some consulting with children's stores, they are a little bit old school compared to other stores maybe. So maybe okay. they are still doing COD with some companies. They've been doing it a long time. But okay. um, Here, well, would I, you unless I'm missing it? something, do you agree? I would just say, yeah, no, we don't do Here, that. We okay. just, well, I mean, the truth is if you, have, if you accept credit cards, um, I think it's a better choice for them, and you can just present it like that. Here, here's what okay. happens with COD. If, for example, I don't know who you're shipping with, but if you're shipping with UPS, there's a charge for COD. There's a charge of seven or dollars. 
Okay, so there's a charge. I can't remember what it is now, but it's at least about another eight dollars that adds to the shipping. Um, okay. Which, you know, in a way, you can say if you want to, you know, if you, if you want to make your rap happy, you can say, you know, I'll, you can offer a COD, but that means they're gonna pay a little bit more for the shipping, where I can give them the option of paying with credit card. Where it's basically the same thing. I mean, in the same way, actually, it's better for them. They get some more terms on their credit card. They get points on their credit card. Okay. They can do okay. things on their credit card. It's better. So you're kind of like suggesting okay. the COD, but in the same way, showing how credit card is a better option for everybody. Well, that's, okay, that begs you. the question, though, too. Do, uh, if your sales rep has a really good relationship these, with these stores and trusts them, I guess that's one thing, but... Why does somebody want COD? Because I know I have shipped COD and it wasn't a um, a bank check, you know. Right. It was a regular company check and it's bounced. Sure. So that's I don't I, I, I don't feel like people who who want to do COD sometimes it's because they got something funky going on. Not yeah. always, you know. Sometimes they're just yeah. so cool, but but that's um. Cool. You I know? mean, maybe, maybe if you offer COD, it'll be a. Uh... Not not a company check, just uh, or at least the first couple of times with a customer. Just do okay. uh, so. You are offering that? You'll offer it as like uh, what do you call this um, money check? I yeah, can block them. Um, and... Yeah, the, uh, like certified check. funds. Or right. Yeah, but I would I would just say no unless you're really pushed to, to the wall. I mean, I would just okay. Say no. It just seems yeah, like I mean, honestly, it's it's, it's, it's over. Of... It's over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. kind of but if you want to get out of it nicely, just present it as like the less attractive option anyway. Yeah, okay, we'll do certified you. check, COD, and you right. pay the eight dollar fee. Right. Yeah, then great. Okay. I'm happy to do it. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Like okay. All right. All right. All right. And you, you have to send me so a Christmas much. card too. I will do that. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that. I mean, the, you know, if I do COD for you, then you'll have, have to, to send me a Christmas card. Yeah, I want chocolates and, you know, a few other things, too. <laughs> I like that. I'll do that, too. <laughs> oh, gosh, okay. This is perfect. Thank and you. And where, where are you getting your things made? Locally in um, North Carolina? Now in Huntington Beach, California. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And so you found a manufacturer out there that's doing small runs for you? It is, yeah, and it was funny because I was reading one of your, either your blog or something that you said online. I was one of the people that made the mistake of going to China too early, right. and uh. I, I spent so much money and, and, and then eventually ended up back here in the U.S., So, and, and I'm so glad to have found my manufacturer. And- you know, I've, we've talked about this before, right? Yep. Yes, I called you yeah. when you were getting okay. ready to um, hop on a conference call. Yeah, and so you know what? Um, if it's okay, I think Boaz would be interested in this story too. If we could interview you for IDA and tell your story about going to China first and how you ended up back in the States. and oh, sort of, Wouldn't that be good? That would be really nice because that would be – oh, yeah. Felicia's like, great, my best fortune is your great blog right. post. So I'm so glad, Jane. <laughs> right. No, but if you'd like, I think... No, could, that'll be fine. True life stories. Don't do what Felicia did. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right, that's okay. really? I mean, we would love to hear that your story and, and to, you know, just to help guide other people who are considering doing it. Oh, yeah. gosh, yes. I don't mind. No. Okay. That's well, I'll, I'll shoot you. Do I have your email? Uh, we'll find you. I'll hunt you down, okay. and one of us will get in t- contact you, and we'll just do a little, you know, here's the... Five mistakes I made, and you know, maybe it, yeah, you're, you're, okay. it could help others, you know. Okay, okay. If you don't mind. <laughs> no, that's I, fine. I, I just have one quick question to you. What is the product exactly that you're doing? You haven't told us. Or have children's. you? Children's. Children's but, apparel. Yeah, okay. children's apparel. And it's um, a classic traditional line. Cool. Awesome. Classic traditional line? Mm-hmm. And okay, it's, awesome. it's actually focused on boys. So it's boy-focused because the children's industry, there is a real big gap for classic boys' apparel. There's a lot of trendy things, but not a lot of classic, traditional, just kind of, um, what is it, things that can be handed down to generation from generation to generation. I totally agree. I have two boys. And um, if I want something with like a skull on it and Rock bands, it's no problem. You can find that all day long. Yeah, yeah. all day long. 
Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I've got two boys, too. That's how the whole idea came about. I know, and they're so darn cute, but their clothes aren't half that cute. <laughs> no, I know it. It is. They're so darn cute. <laughs> they're so freaking not. adorable. But they, yeah, they need a little work on their their outfits. They do. God, they do. And what sizes do you go into? What is your size range? I start at a size three month and get to a size eight. And it's oh, wow, yeah. to think... Because I can, I can get the door open to get into stores because that's the first thing people say to me is, oh, you've got all boys. Well, everybody else that we talk to is so much girl stuff. Yes, come to see me. But to go as this point, it is um, harder because I now have to go around to all these stores. But yeah, at yeah, least oh, I yeah. get an order as opposed to you know, having them the stuff at the showroom and all the people come but nobody sees me. So I, I'm so happy you all said that. So it's no, so it's, interesting. it's a lot of work and but the thing is the second time you sell there it may be easier. Like maybe you you can get a temporary showroom or you will have a showroom at some point but or a, you know, a sales rep or they can order from your, your sketches too. If they know your quality and your styling right. you may mm-hmm. not have to schlep every single time. I mean, it is not the super long-term strategy to sell it yourself forever, but mm-hmm. um, for now, I think it's perfect. Yeah, and I, I love it when I get there. I love oh, telling the story oh, and showing the line. I mean, I, I would absolutely, if I could, go from from here to Florida and then to Texas and Dallas where the sales rooms are, but, you know, with a six-month-old yeah. and a three-year-old. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Felicia. Well, thank yeah, you so much. <laughs> thank you for calling in, and we're going to get back to you to do a um, real-life story from Felicia. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Appreciate it. Thank you very it. much, and good luck. All right, thank you. Well, wait, don't we have some more people? Yeah, yeah. We're going to oh, – oh, no, no. Wait, um, yes, we're just going to – hopefully you can hear. <laughs> oh, we're going to move on to the next caller, so just hang on and listen. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay, Perfect. great. Perfect. Don't hang up. We're just going to mute you so your time your time talking is over, but your listening time is just beginning. All right. Perfect. Thank okay, you. Thank awesome. you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Boaz, do you want to take a written question, or should we go to another live? A live I like uh, the live people. Do you want to do live? Okay. We have – okay, let's try – okay, there's a person in Houston, Texas – do you have Come on, any? Houston. Come on the line. Yeah. Uh, if you have a question for us and you know how to raise a hand. You can, uh, here, here you are, Houston. You can do star seven to unmute your line. Oh, hello. Hi, this is Natalie. I'm from Houston. Hi, Hi Natalie. Nat- how are you? Doing really well. I actually just tuned in like 30 seconds ago, so okay. I'm more just listening at the moment than have oh, any cool. immediate questions, but um, yeah, you can go on to whoever has the next question, and I'll just keep listening. Okay, cool. no worries, no and welcome. Thanks. Okay. Cool. So, um, boys, I have a question that I'd like to do that's written, because it's a Yeah, because we have some questions that people have emailed, right? Yeah, there's a few good ones, yeah. I mean, they're all good, but um, – Okay, so here is a jewelry designer in, um, um, it looks like she's in California. Okay, she says, right now I'm making all the jewelry myself. I don't quite work full-time on the production, so I still have room to grow and to keep it simple. So she's doing jewelry, and she's doing most of making it herself, but it's not completing her time, okay? She's trying to get into three or four stores this year. She's brand new. Is she crazy to think she can do it all by herself is her first question. Um, she says, it seems overwhelming to see the work that goes into production from the paperwork sent this month. <laughs> um, so it looks like she's in one of my programs, and um, my How to Start a Fashion Business program, uh-huh. and... Um, one of the sessions, Boaz, does have ten, 10 handouts, which is a little overwhelming, but that's the most of any of them. So, um, so um, it says, from the research I did, it seems like a lot of jewelry makers are doing things overseas. Can you give me some advice and some direction? Um, I, I don't mind making it all myself now, but I don't want to keep doing this forever. I don't blame her. No, I don't blame her either. Okay, so if the goal is three, four, up to ten stores, it seems like I, I don't, I haven't seen 
her prod her product right. um but it's jewelry so um i can i can picture all different kinds of jewelry in my head um it seems like it's completely doable on your own I and would, i would do that for now because i think actually that's one of the things that i kind of like about uh jewelry um a lot of the lines and the, and the jewelry designers um you know not necessarily i mean it depends on the product but a lot of times they're not really depending on an outside contractor to produce their jewelry and yeah. it's actually an, an, it's kind of an advantage um so in my opinion she should definitely um start the way she can which is doing it herself right now even if it's a little bit overwhelming but again if she has a goal of like in you know a certain season to get to a point where um you know she's growing and using uh, an outside contractor that's perfect she'll she'll work herself to it but i i totally agree with you at this point i would definitely try to keep it yeah well here's the thing about jewelry um i know some fairly large companies who still do all of their production in house and we are right. talking about um like one room and four people you know, and they crank it out. And actually, I'm thinking right. one designer who I know does private label for bigger companies, and um, they're still doing it in house. They get, um, you know, jewelry makers to come in in their place and work with them. Right. I mean, so, can, I mean, I don't really know how complicated. Or obviously, we don't know how complicated a product. Is. A lot of times, she could maybe hire someone for a day or two just to help her, or whatever times it is. You know, yeah, and and look for some um, you to 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 get helpers. I do suggest um, actually, boys, you know great about this. How where to get some people to help you through Craigslist? Could you talk about yeah. that for a couple of minutes and give some tips on that? There's a Craig. I mean, honestly, if, if you go to gigs on Craigslist um, and just post something to get someone to help you, um, you can find tons of people and, and students and uh, things like that. But even if you know, she can maybe um, approach, you know, I don't know, some kind of uh, school or uh, university and just put something on it that she's looking for someone to help her for a couple of days. Um, there's actually, I blocked up on top of my head, but there's there's, a, there's actually a website. It could be actually only in New York when I think about it. That what they do is... Um, you, if you're looking for someone to do an errand or a job or a project for a day, for an hour, for one quick run, you know, you just post it on it and there's people who respond to it. So there's different ways where you can hire someone for whatever time that you need. And I think probably Craigslist is the best way um, to get someone to help you for a certain day, for a certain project. So um, I think also... Um, would be sorry, the best can you hear me? It's having a yeah. phone a phone thing um also uh, one one of my clients she makes like bracelets and and oh. also leather bracelets and she found people to work she did find through Craigslist for sure but she also went to a local bead shop and she said do you have any young people who are really into it who are looking for um extra work and actually it turned out not to be young people that were looking but they did find um people to help people to help through a bead shop and um Another one was through, well, just through another friend of hers, but um, like a, like even a retail store yeah, could be they, helpful. They, they can be creative about finding people. You know, honestly, for the most part, if you think you can always find someone in your near surroundings, someone who knows someone, or someone you know who's out of a job, who has some time, whatever. There's always ways to have someone like that, and it's pretty. I definitely think that's the way she should go about this. Yeah, you know, um, I, I probably have mentioned this sto story before, so I don't. If, if you've heard it before, forgive me, guys. But um, the um, when I was doing baby blankets, when I was not doing my women's line anymore, I started doing baby blankets, and I really was looking for a dip different kind of type of contractor than I had been using for you know women's dresses. And uh -huh. my friend suggested where she got her dry cleaning done was a wonderful tailor, a woman who fixed all her her clothes. And right. my friend who does it buys some pretty fancy clothes. So I was like, okay, well, um, I'm not going to a dry cleaner. You know, I'm in business here. I've been in business 14 years. I was a little like, whatever, thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> but anyway, so I went into the dry cleaner because I just 
did. And I talked to the lady, and it turned out she owned a factory in Korea for 20 years. Ooh. So, yeah, she was awesome. She had a machine. She had everything. She was a true tailor, and um, she made all my baby blankets. And the beautiful thing was she's open six days a week. I could always stop by in there. And she works like crazy. She was always there from, like, 8 a.m. till 7 p.m., you know, 6 o'clock at night. That's cool. So, yeah, it was really handy because I could just stop by whenever I wanted, and um, it was awesome. So I was a little snotty about it at first. You know, <laughs> you can imagine, but I got over it pretty fast when I got a decent price from the lady at the at the dry cleaners. Right, right. Um, do we? I, I have more questions here, written ones. More questions? Yeah, I think actually it'd be better because I'm, I'm okay. having technical issues here with figuring out who has a question and who's not. So, if you can go with another uh, question that anybody emailed us, and we'll we'll take it from there. Um. Okay. So she she says here, um, and Jane, in one of your blog posts, you mentioned that, or your video blogs, you mentioned that the um, the fabric for one of your designs was cut wrong, so you were not charged for the cutting. Thanks for nothing, I would say, says, says the writer. She says, does, does this mean that the company has no liability in replacing the fabric and you have to purchase it again at your own expense and the other goes to waste? Um Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, That's been my experience. What about you, Boaz? Uh, oh, I, I can tell you, I have a couple of interesting experiences. It really depends on where the issue happened, you know, if, if whoever did Will you give us one good story? Come on. Um, okay. <laughs> Come on, let's well, do this a little. I have a pretty good story um, that had to do with that type of thing. Uh, I worked on a... doesn't matter. I don't want to put too many... Anyway, details about the line, but there was a line that I worked with. It was the first season, the first time, and the grader made a mistake. One of the people who worked in the grading there who worked on that project, uh, one of the styles, they graded down instead of up. Oh, so, God! So if we starting, for example, in sample size 4 or 6, I can't remember what it was, um, and we had to grade up to size 12 and 14, um, what happened is that size 12 and 14 went down from size 4, and size 2 and 0 went up from size 4. So we had size 12 oh looks like a baby garment, oh and size 0 looks like a, kind of a more mature. <laughs> so um, did, it, did it fit, like, did the 0 fit like an 8? So it was really just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, Kind of. There was okay. part of it was part of it was not. Yeah, was, I hear you. Just a couple of pieces pieces on it didn't happen. And that problem, has never happened to me. I love this story. It, it, and the problem was that uh, it was cut like that already. Meaning the marker was done, and the cutting room cut it like that. Yeah. And, and I just found out about it when it got to the to the factory, um, when they opened the pieces and realizing this. Truth is, I went back to the guy, to the company who did the marketing and grading, and the owner of the line freaked out. And I said, you know, just give me one day to deal with it. I went back to the to the marketing and grading, um, showed them what happened. Truth is, they couldn't say anything. They just the guy was apologizing to the roof. They end up paying for new fabrics that we had to buy and recut these pieces. They end up paying for the time that the cutting room spent on recutting the pieces. They basically covered all the expenses that had to do with fixing the problem. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the customer, the, the owner of the line didn't really, didn't really, almost like it never happened. Um, wow. So in, in a way, it kind of really depends on where the mistake happens. You know, and I don't know about this person that you're that asking questions. Um, if the cutting room got the marker already on the marking grading, you know, they can look at it and, and maybe figure it out. But sometimes they're not. She really needs to see where, who made the actual mistake, and they should definitely cover it. Yeah. And so you think they should reimburse for the fabric then, too? Yeah, I mean, if... See, here, here's the, the two options that I can think of. One of the options is if she 
if they use the market that she gave them and just cut it one to one, um, then it's really not the cutting room's fault. They just follow the marker and just cut the pieces that were on this marker. Then she yeah. should go back to whoever made the marker and have them pay for whatever expenses she needs to go through. But if the marker was right and the cutting room made a mistake in laying out the fabric and cut it wrongly, then the cutting room should pay for it and should be basically covering all her expenses. Whatever needs to be taken to deal with that, to fix that. Yeah. So, yeah, so they need to... I mean, I that's what I had and that's what I did. And quite honestly, if someone made a mistake, they can't really say much at the end of the day. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, um, it okay. kind of depends on the person, but yeah, you're right. I, I mean, it does depend, but and I, I just was really kind of wussy about fingering whose fault it was and have them pay for it, I got to right. say. No, Because I mean, they the same people for a long time, so I was a little right. like... Uh. And, and, and that's, I, I will be honest, sometimes that can be kind of tricky and sometimes, you know, contractors or, or, or other uh, outside resources that you work with, you know, we all people we all make mistakes here and there. Um, so it kind of depends if it's something small that can be fixed, that can work, then it's worth jeopardizing it because the relationship is generally nice with this, so you kind of make it work. You're right. It kind of sometimes depends on the situation individually for the for that specific situation, but realistically if someone made a mistake that cost her uh, a lot of time and money or whatever it is and you know they need to figure out a way to compensate her hmm. okay all right i'm I'm with you i'm totally with you um okay so here's another question um Okay, so we are in our very first season, and we've just moved our lookbook, our line sheet, our order form to our website. We're just sending out information to boutiques, and one link makes it so much easier to send. Um, since we only sell wholesale and we'll only be giving boutiques this website address, URL, she means, whatever, do we need to password protect this site? Afraid the buyer won't go through this process of accessing a password protected site because it's an extra step and we're brand new. At the same time, the wholesale prices are on the site and the buyer may not want to, the end user seeing the wholesale price, even though we're not selling retail and end users won't really find the site, except for, I can tell you right now, she sent me the name of the site, it's the name of the company. So they actually will find that site. Um, Okay, so basically, do they need a password protected site if they're only selling wholesale? Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I, I kind of think, yeah. Because, I mean, okay, if you're going to name the site, if the site's going to be called the name of your company, right? then you have to just simply have the pictures up there and not the wholesale prices. If sure. you want to... Make up, uh, make a new site or an unlisted site, which is I have done before, by the way. Which is un, you can't Google it and find it. And yeah. I actually have a site like this for one of my programs. It's yeah. it's unlisted. It's it's um you you have to have the exact link to get there, and the only way you're going to get that link is if, if somebody forwards it to you. Sure. So my suggestion to you then, um, Rebecca, is to do that. To go ahead and put make it completely wholesale, but just make it something really weird that nobody would ever search for and come up with. Right. And you can make your website that you can't search it and find it. You know, if I wanted to make janehamill.com that you Googled it and nothing came up, I could. Right. Of course, that would be idiotic. But you know what I mean? Like for the right reason, that makes sense. So no. – um, you're right. I mean, probably that's probably the best way to just separate these two and have one more secure. Yeah, and and really, they could probably be the same site, and just it would be sure. a couple pages that would be unlisted on your regular site. But if you had the URL, you could see them. Right. I think like, that's the is that the the cheapo way to go about it. You think? Yeah, absolutely. I think I did that as well. Um, you know, I had a page that. Basically, it's part of the line, but you can't really access it through the website. Um, only if I give you a direct link to it. Exactly. So um, all you have to do is have your web designer, whomever, um, and then just make it private. You, sure. There's usually a section that calls, says private, and then you just you see the URL at the top, and you give that to the wholesale the wholesale buyers. Right. Yeah, that's easy. Problem, that's problem solved. The get away, as they say. Good job. Good job. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, we're getting almost to the end of the of our, our hour. Uh, do you have another quick question there? Um, well, I did want to tell about the costing and pricing seminar. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. I'm so sorry. I forgot to introduce us. I always do that. I'm sorry. Do you want to just do that first, and then I'll have, I do have another question. Let's just do it before I forget. Yeah. You want to do it? Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, right on. Okay, so <clears throat> costing and pricing – your line. Always getting questions on that. It's always a tricky thing, and if it's done incorrectly, you can have your whole season and not make any money thinking that you would. So since we get so many questions on that, Boaz is going to do, and I'm helping, but Boaz is really the man on this, and he's going to be doing um, this costing seminar. It's coming up next week on the 24th, January 24th. It's at same time, same channel, right? 1 p.m. Eastern, yep. Yep, 1 p.m. Eastern. You do have to register for it, and if you go to the, um, the loveindiedesign.com, you will see costing webinar. You sign up for it just like you signed up for this Q&A. And um, he has a rockin' costing sheet that he's going to show you. On the, the, we've been, he's been working on it already, and um, it's really, really um, comprehensive is the word I'm looking for. It has everything on there and all the kind of hidden costs. It's going to teach you what goes on your costing sheet, what doesn't go on your costing sheet, what things you might forget to put on, what's a markup that is appropriate for your niche. Sure. You know, how much should you be marking things up? Um, how do you and do you include salesmen's um, percentages, uh, that type of thing? And it's going to last for an hour. Again, it's totally free because the Indie Design <laughs> Association is here for you. <laughs> what am I forgetting? Anything? Uh, no, I think that's that's the story. If you want to learn more about how to cost your product right, tune next Tuesday. Yeah. So go to loveindiedesign.com. Click on the second one. You'll see the cost. The this Q and A is probably still up there. The second one is um, costing, and just register. And yeah. what I would ask you, could I ask you a favor to the, to the listeners today, to the Jane and Boaz radio show? If you found this call helpful, if it was valuable, would you mind helping us spread the word about IDA? Would you go to your Facebook page, multitask, head over there and say, hey, I'm listening to this live Q&A from, you know, it's at Twitter, it's at Indie Design Ask. And um, Facebook is Indie Design Association Facebook page. Would you say you listened? Would you say you liked it? Would you say, hey, guys, you should come? Would you help us spread the word? That would be awesome. Um, and other announcements or anything that I should be mentioning, Boaz? I think that uh, that's it for our announcements. Okay, so... Um, here's a question that's interesting, okay, and then I know we, we'll have to get off in a second, but um, she says, my skirt designs were graded for average height using the same pattern specifications. Can I just add three inches to accommodate tall sizes? Again, sorry, you got cut off. Can she just um, add? My skirt designs were graded for average height using the same pattern specs. Can I add three inches to accommodate tall sizes? Um it's very hard. It's kind of a too much of a general question. Generally, she can, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think but, so too. Uh, yeah, I mean, depends on her product, and I, I'm not really sure what she means of every size or how she's going to do it. But generally, she can. Although three inches seems a lot, but maybe she's right. No, maybe it is right. Actually. You know, I think um, it, this yeah, is a loaded question, and so at the base, at the at the just looking at the question, sure, just add a few inches to the bottom, it should be yeah. fine. No, I mean. <laughs> Generally, yes. No, no, generally, that's fine. That should be fine. Even if it's going to be too long, you know, uh, they can they can adjust it. Um, but, yeah, generally, it's fine. I mean, I it's, it's different than pants and whatever, but, I mean, pants, you can do that, too. But, um, yeah, okay, so, and then the question is, should the purchase order be, shi should a pur purchase order be signed by the contractor? Oh, <laughs> it's a great <laughs> question. It's a great question. To be honest with you, uh, I don't know if the answer is going to make more sense or not. Um, it can be signed. Will it? Will it do much? I don't know. I mean, sign as far as uh, if she means like sign and, and and kind of agree to certain terms or anything. Yeah, like. yeah. 
Okay, so the answer is yes, it should be. I mean, it will. Does it happen? Uh, realistically, even if it does, even if it does, what can she do with the signature? If, if the contractor is going to come and say, you know, and we're late in two days, she's going to take them to court because they signed. I, you know, it, it's, it's a tricky situation. I know that's not what people want to hear, but, I, 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 you know, it's, um, you can. The truth is, I'll tell you this, if you work with a contractor for season after season, you might do it the first season. I promise you the second season or third season, you won't do it. So, should or should I think, not? I think yeah. it's, um, here, here's my take, and I just from, I totally agree. You are absolutely agree with Boaz. I would probably get in the habit of doing it, trying to do it when you're first starting with somebody. That's, because that's, that's, it sort yeah. of shows them that you are you know what you're talking about and you mean business, you know. But, yeah, in the reality, when you're working with somebody, you're not going to bother because things just move fast. And there's a certain level of trust. And if there isn't, then you shouldn't be working with that contractor at all. True. And the truth, exactly. I mean, if you need to sign an agreement with them every season or every time you make a sample or every month that you produce something, then it's probably some, there's more than that. You know, there's more headache that goes into it on your part, and it's not what you want. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Can I do one more question? All right, you like questions. Well, I like this one. Um, she's selling handbags, Elizabeth, and she says, yes. what works better, sending my information um, about my product to boutiques versus email or sending them in the mail? This is this is one of my favorite topics, and this is something – this is kind of the reason I started this How to Sell Your Line to Boutiques Boot Camp right here, Boaz, yes. because the exact process of how to approach a store is what I think a lot of us – when we're first starting out, myself included, are really confused about. Sure. I remember asking. I had a rep um, in the beginning, but I was still selling on my own as well. Huh. And I remember saying to her, could you please give me the script of what I should say when I call a store? And she just looked at me and said, well, you just start talking. You just <laughs> There's not a script. You just talk. And I said, but when you talk, what words come out? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Could you give me the script? So, um, yeah, it, it's not that much easier in email because you're still talking even though it's an email. So sure. there's no perfect answer. I think that um, it's a combination of both, mail and email. But email is certainly dominant, which is why I like mail because then you stand out. But right. if anybody listening is interested in really, I want to know exactly. And I, and I go and I show you an exact template of this is an email that you should send to the boutique, okay? This is how, where you should put the picture. This is where you should put the link. This is where you should put I do exactly what it should look like. Um, because, again, like I said, I was a retailer for 14 years. I've received a million of these. And I work with other retailers, and I can tell you what is more likely to get opened, what is more likely to get a response. Um, so all of that is in um, How to Sell Your Line to Boutiques, and that's on my website at janehamill.com, and then go to boot camps. So if anybody needs more help there, um, that's, the you know, place. that's available. That's the place. Absolutely. Parting words, my man? Um, I think so, yeah. I think we're, we're done for the, this week. Okay, so join us. Um, same bad time, same bad channel on the 24th. It's Tuesday, and it's um, 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 yes. o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Pacific. Register on the loveindiedesign.com website. Again, we really do want to hear from you. We really want to know what are the topics you'd like to hear from on these webinars. And, um, you know, we're working on a costing your – product intensive as well eventually but for now we got the webinar coming up and um here's crossing our fingers that everybody on this call is going to have terrific success with their business in 2012 absolutely boaz thanks thank you uh, all right buddy we'll catch you uh, we'll be talking but we'll catch everybody next week have a great right. day bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.